Okay, so recently I saw the FNAF movie, and honestly, it was it, it was a pretty good movie, so I just want to talk about it, because it, it was so good, I've not got anyone to talk about it with. So, before we get in, I know this goes without saying, but uh, spoiler warning, I will be covering uh, details about the movie's plot, different characters, easter eggs, and all that stuff, so if you haven't seen the movie, do yourself a solid and watch the movie. It's really good, I enjoyed it, and if you're a fan of FNAF, I definitely recommend watching it. The movie takes a little time having Mike working at the pizzeria, but it doesn't take too long, it's, it's fine. You know, it's like within like the first 20-30 minutes of the movie, uh, he, he, he gets the job from youth counselor Steve Raglan, which, as many people have pointed out, is supposed to be an anagram of everlasting, but Scott Cawthon, doing his classic Scott Cawthon trolling, <sighs> changed it to an A, so it's everlasting. So it would have been a cool reference, but it wasn't. Thanks, Scott. Now, there is a lot of good things I can say about the movie. The designs of the animatronics, seeing them brought to life the way Scott envisioned, is just really cool. Seeing... Freddy, Chica, Bonnie, uh, next to the other characters in the movie that were actually life-size humans. It was really cool. These things were larger than life. So awesome seeing them on the screen and the designs were really cool. Now, something a lot of people have complained about is that Bonnie is blue. And if you've played the games, he looks purple. But, he was never purple. He was always blue. Always. Just the lighting. At least that's what some people use as code. I like him being blue though. I love Toy Bonnie. And if that thing was purple, probably wouldn't love him as much. So let's just end the debate there. Now the the animatronics didn't look like as, as greasy and dirty as they did within the games, but this is a bit before, like the movie's kind of doing its own thing, but trying to keep story beats and elements from different sources of media, so we've got the books, we of course have the games, what's out of this whole thing. That is why we do have Vanessa, who we only rarely see in Security Breach, unless there's some kind of law where she's been throughout the whole series or something. I'm not very caught up with the law, so who knows, maybe that joke is actually got some truth to it. Yeah, we have Vanessa and Mike from two different ends of the FNAF spectrum interacting, uh, which was a bit interesting. We also have um, Abby, which, again, I'm not very read up on the law, no idea who, who Abby is, but I did like her character, her portrayal, and honestly was a good child actor, and, you know, it's always great to see a child that can actually act within a movie, and who knows what her career might be in the future. Now Mike, uh, Josh Hutchison, he was, he, he was a pretty cool character. He sort of had like a bit of a deadbeat dad kind of vibe, but he was struggling with a lot of stuff. Obviously he doesn't excuse it, but having a bit more understanding to a character and why someone behaves the way they do, um, it's definitely nice that we do get to understand why he's the way he is. Uh, because he's broken, he's blamed himself for the loss of his brother, so he needs to come to terms with that, and he does do that throughout the movie. We do actually see a reference to Sparky the dog. Well, two actually. We see a dog animatronic just lying on the floor, broken up or whatever. And then the restaurant, uh, and that restaurant scene is actually called Sparky's, named after Sparky the dog. We also see MatPat, and I love MatPat. And seeing him on the screen was was really awesome. I was like, whoa, holy shit, it's MatPat. That, that guy who said Sansa's Nest. Speaking of, they actually had his name of his character as Ness as a reference to that theory. Because Scott Cawthon do be kind of like that. And yeah, I didn't notice that until I saw MatPat's video, which I would also recommend checking out because... You know, it gives a lot of information about the movie and secrets and stuff that he knew. Uh, Markiplier was supposed to be in the movie, 
due to scheduling conflicts, he couldn't make it, but that's fine, you know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not upset about that. I completely get that. Schedules don't always align, so you don't always get to do the stuff you want to. But yeah. And then we also get uh, the reveal of Springtrap. <laughs> or he is just referred to as the Yellow Bunny in the movie. Now his design deviates a little bit from uh, his FNAF 3 appearance. But that actually makes sense because this is a sort of earlier stage um, of his character, so this, he, he wasn't Springlock until, like, the end of the movie, and what's set after Springlock was a bit different to the, uh, the games, so what actually happens is Chica's cupcake <laughs> bites him, and that was cool. Also, seeing, like, the guys just getting all murdered and stuff, that was pretty cool. Now, in the UK, the movie was actually a 15 plus rating, uh, elsewhere, it was 13 plus. The UK has weird laws and stuff, so it is what it is, but I am 15, so I, I could see the movie. And like I said, it was a pretty good movie. Also, there was a scene where I did almost cry when, like, Abby was just introducing the animatronics to Mike. I just thought that was very heartfelt. And then there was the scene when Mike was explaining to Vanessa what's going on. Vanessa was a bit weird in this movie, honestly. Like, she wasn't very direct explaining stuff to Mike. And then it's just sort of, oh, yeah, so my, my dad owned the place and he killed people in the 80s. Sorry I didn't tell you sooner. No, I don't want to give a whole analysis or anything over the movie. I just want to talk about it. Yeah, seeing Balloon Boy in the movie, though, that was a bit strange. Balloon Boy doesn't appear in the games until the second one. My cat is, like, right down there. Jesus Christ. So that was a bit odd. I didn't like his design too much. I think he was a bit more toothy than he is in the games. And he wasn't, like, a full-size animatronic. He was just a little toy. That was interesting. Seeing Golden Freddy's design was also interesting, because it wasn't quite gold or anything. But, you know, I get it. And yeah, I have seen the memes. <laughs> this is Phantom Tax. First I got your brother. Now I riz you. Skibbity, my friend. Um, also, I do think that Springtrap's entrance was a bit rushed. It didn't come out quite well. I think they could have taken a bit more time to establish his character because it kind of just comes out at the end and there's no sort of overarching thing. We just kind of find out. So that was interesting. Also, Corey X. Kenshin was in the movie in his little cutscene and that, that was pretty cool. In conclusion, I definitely liked the movie. But that cupcake was on some shit.